Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending August 16th. First up, this was a question asked by Mr. Duh Factor. He was talking to his barber and he was talking about an article that I had read previously but I just wasn't sure if it would be enough of interest to anybody. NASA test demonstrates impossible propulsion system. This article is from the Christian Science Monitor. It's to me, it's comparable to the ion propulsion drives. This is a type of drive system that, if it does seem like it's going to be real and practical, which it, at least by the NASA tests, it does seem to produce some propulsion force, but we're talking about such a minute amount of force. If you've read any of my, uh, if you've read any articles or paid attention to any of my TDD reports in the past, I've talked about the ion propulsion drives and these type of drive systems. They literally push with the force of a feather or lighter on these craft, which in outer space, it's not such a big deal. If it's a robotic spacecraft on a long journey of years or more, as long as you keep having the force act on the craft, it's going to speed up and speed up and continuously accelerate as long as you're pushing it even to a small amount. But as far as using this to uh, journey in starships or anything like that or even something the size of the space shuttle around our solar system in any kind of uh, decent times, uh, not going to really happen. Um, some details about this and they even have at the end of this article, they even do have the uh, abstract of the paper that you can look at and it's uh, free to view. It's not one of those things where you have to fill out forms or anything. It's non-copyrighted and free to view, but just to give you an idea here, um, it talks about, let me get some of the facts here about it, but they said it was something like 50 micronewtons of force total that this thing produced. And just to give you an idea, one newton of force is not even one one hundredth of a horsepower, and you're talking fifty micro neutrons. That's fifty millionths of one newton of force. So almost none to speak of. So if they do have it in the future, it's going to have to compete against the ion craft. The, the ion craft does require fuel, but you talk about maybe half a pound or a pound of xenon gas aboard a craft and you're just spitting out a few atoms at a time. So if you're doing it at that small of a rate, you're not talking about anything that's going to use up um, even that half a pound of fuel, even in years, maybe even decades or longer. So uh, yeah, Interesting. I hope it does prove true. It's uh, based on quantum effects. The reason why they like this is it uses absolutely no fuel, they claim, because it's just based on quantum effects and uh, particle interactions. If you've ever seen the experiment where they take two uh, metal plates and put them together close enough, you can actually get quantum effects, produce pressure on the plates themselves. Now, this is an experiment at very small scales, but you can get quantum pressure just from virtual particles popping in and out of existence. It actually puts pressure on these plates. So. I think that is a pretty good idea, at least for a robotic spacecraft. And if we're talking about maybe journeys so far into the uh, Andromeda galaxy or something, or into the Andromeda um, star system, something like that, um, that would be uh, something you, you would probably look into. This next one is from my friend Gary, Pseudo GJ, Hormel Motorcycle Fueled by Bacon. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, websites. The first one is from CNET. And the second one is from Modern Farmer. Uh, they started out from Austin and not Austin, Texas. This is Austin, Minnesota, the headquarters of Hormel. I had relatives that actually lived up there, so I've been to Austin a few times. Have not made it to the uh, Hormel Spam Museum. That I would kind of like to see. So uh, that might be a geek stop you could possibly make. But yeah, they custom designed this motorcycle. And uh, I'll put up a picture of it along with the... Uh, probably along with the article itself. I'll put up the picture. Custom designed, um, looks just like a modified uh, biodiesel type of engine. The mechanic that designed the engine and some other people came along for the ride just to make sure um, it kept running. I saw no news about it breaking down, at least uh, no spectacular breakdowns or anything like that. So um, seemed to have made the trip. Um, started out in Austin, stopped a few way, I think it stopped at Sturgis along the way and then ended up in San Diego, California for the Bacon Fest. Uh, one thing about um, bacon biodiesel is there's plenty of bacon grease waste. So as far as biodiesel goes, this is probably the way to go. Biodiesel out of waste products rather than food products. And like they said, it's uh, environmentally safe enough to where if they dumped a tanker full of it in the ocean, the fish and the bacteria would just be happy for a few days with a lot of extra food. So not something you would even have to clean up as a spill or anything like that. Um, 
yeah, biodiesel of the future, pretty much, uh, I would like to see it instead of made out of regular plant products and taking away food made out of waste products that we have to dispose of or, or use in some other way. So um, the second website to check out, like I said, Modern Farmer talks about bacon, gives you a little bit more detail. The one sad thing about it, though, is if you actually go to their website, Powered by Bacon, all you see is these little 15, 16 second clips and some pictures and stuff like that. I guess they're holding out because of the fact this whole thing is to make a documentary type of movie, uh, which was showed at San Diego. And if anybody does um, find a link as soon as you can, send it to me if possible. I'll keep looking for it too. But uh, this was basically just to put together a, a documentary on the bacon powered motorcycle and uh, the celebration of uh, Hormel being a part of the bacon festival in san diego and uh and i'd really like to thank you guys too for uh continuing to contribute to the tdd report a lot of times i have slow weeks and it's really nice if people send me in ideas for subjects or send me in the links to subjects themselves and last up this is something i've gotten involved in for a long time it's these uh super saver cards or uh what do they call them just uh customer appreciation cards some people call them tracking cards you can fill them out like I have one from Ace Hardware I use I use my Walgreens card and I use my uh, one for the movie theater the uh, uh, cinema has a, a loyal cut I guess you call customer loyalty cards would be another way to call it too um, a lot of them really are useless and I don't bother to fill them out because I just don't think you get much rewards for the amount of effort you put into them but for these three I have I'll have to say for the Ace Hardware card it seems like every month I either get a $5 off coupon for spending $25 or I just get a $5 cash coupon where I can go in and buy a $5 item and not even, you know, just get it for free or put it towards a purchase. And uh, two others are the cinema one. The cinema one, it seems like about every three trips to the movies, I either get uh, my refreshments for free or I get a free movie ticket out of it with the points that I accumulate. So that seems to be well worthwhile. Um, I, I have a Sears one I tried, but it, it is totally useless. I mean, it's been broken from day one. I've never been able to use any of the points for anything. Um, nothing works quite right. I've uh, put emails into the place and all they do is come back with apologies and we're so sorry. And I'm like, I don't want you to be sorry. Fix it. And they never fix it. So. Uh, that's kind of a disaster, along with other disasters from Sears that I could get into for a long ways. But the Walgreens one is what I want to talk about. Uh, what they're doing now, which is kind of an idea, I don't know why nobody else decided to come up with it too, but if, you, uh, if you're if you a loyal customer of Walgreens, you get the, uh, you, you've you obviously got an account and then you get the weekly updates and your weekly flyer and the coupons and stuff like that. Well, what they've always done in the past is you click on the coupons. If you don't get the flyer, physical flyer yourself, which I don't, you just click on the coupon, you print it out, and you you cut it and then you bring it into the thing and you get like oh I don't know what are you buying maybe a, an eight pack of batteries that normally is six ninety nine you get them for four bucks you know whatever it ends up being but now what they've just come out with and I just saw this uh, as a matter of fact this morning it's called paperless coupons all you do is you just sign into your Walgreens account and I hope others follow suit with this too with the uh, loyalty customer cards all you do is once you're signed in you just look through the coupons you just click it and it adds it to your card and it's on your account so when you get to the store, you don't have to have any coupon with you at all. If it's added to your card, you just get your items you wanted that were coupon items, and boom, you get the coupon price. So makes life a little bit easier. Um, and it gets you, um, I realize a lot of it's just it's for the promotion sake itself. And uh, I realize some people don't like to be tracked as shoppers. They think, oh, they're tracking what I'm doing. To me, I actually like the idea. I want my customer voice heard. I want them to carry more of the products I want. And uh, sure, the coupons are a way to get you to try new products sometimes. And uh, also, the tracking, the thing I like about the tracking on the customer loyalty cards is the fact that um, if you're buying a product and they're thinking about introducing uh, several new products, they're going to have to make a choice. And if they say, well, look at all of our loyalty customers, they're buying a product that's very similar to this one, so they choose A over B or choose B over C and introduce that into the store, and you might find a product you do like to buy. So. I don't particularly have any problem. If you have a problem, too, leave that in the comments. If you have a problem with the customer loyalty cards and them tracking your shopping or anything like that. but uh, I think this idea of paperless coupons and using technology that way instead of doing the old-fashioned way of printing it on a piece of paper and cutting it out with scissors, you know, and half the time, I don't know about you guys, half the time I put them in my pocket or I think I do and I get to the store, I can't find the dang paper coupon. So if I can't find a flyer in a shopping cart or something, I'm just out of luck and I don't either don't buy the item or pay the full price. So, um, that's about it. Let me know what you think, guys, in the comments below. Take care, everybody, and I will catch you next week.